Hello, my name is Tommy Hench. I'm from Quinton. Uh, born and raised since I was five years of age. Um, my mum used to live on the other side of Birmingham, and obviously my uncles were all like in and out of jail, murder, you know, drug charges, you know, you name it. You couldn't. You, she tried to take me away from all that, but moving me down the east sides. All I ever did was have street fights growing up around the area, which I'll tell you a few when it, you know get later on in the story. Box when I was younger because I really wanted form, uh, fame, fortune, and glory. Um, and I really loved the sport. I mean, I grew up, I grew up my dad watching it, had a massive boxing collection. I'm going to get out of my mum's house, so I used to watch it every day. And obviously the police officer telling me that to get into boxing when I was about 14, I just fell in love with the sport. Um, but the reason I box now, the reason I got back into boxing, because I did, I did retire, and I didn't think I could do anything in boxing at my age, and, and obviously not with green refusing my boxing licence. I started to um, fight for knife stand gloves up, because um, one of my, my mate's son passed away due to knife crime. The boxing accolades, so, uh, my achievements really, uh, in the amateurs, I got to the West Midland final. I was disqualified for throwing windmills. Um, even though I was winning the fight very dominantly when I used to do my own style, but you know, in the amateurs, it's very, you box their way, you, you rejected. And, and that's exactly why uh, I went into unlicensed fighting and exactly why uh, the young lad who lost is out of the gym. Because if you don't do it their way, they'll, they'll just, they'll, even if you win a fight, they'll reject you. I know my coach because um, when I went to the gym years ago, professional gym, there was a coach in the background that never got any recognition, but he was the mastermind behind all the talent of the fighters. And I watched him uh, help out fighters and him only getting £150 out of three and a half months work. I've seen him getting robbed by other people. Um, so I came, approached him and I paid him £200 after that, uh, after, he was, after he was really undercut for all the work he put in. And, he, and he, he, he burst out into tears and we bonded from that day. And he, and he, gave me, and he, and he taught me how to to be, to be the, any, any, any sorts of talent you've seen in the fight today, he brought that out in me. Um, I used to be a gamer. I was sponsored. Uh, I used to travel around the world um, to MLG and to Tournament Pen Fane Halo. Um, and I was one of the best in Europe. I had a, a t our team was ranked three in, in Europe. Um, so video gaming, gaming has always been my, 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 my go-to. Um, so my main hobby would be probably just gaming. Uh, my current thoughts on a fight fight is that uh, Tom Little is 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 he's a fucking a big name, a beatable opponent, um, and I think it's a really good fight for him. Also, I think it's a perfect match because he's, you know, not only is a Thomas, like of course Thomas is a real mad hard cunt. He's willing to fight anybody, and I think he's a perfect opponent because he's somebody that's very likable. But I feel like you know it's easy to switch off the switch on him and, and get the job done because there's a the side to him that you know that that, that I don't feel bad about letting man's go. I'd definitely say um, excited. I mean, I've, I've been wait, kind of like waiting for this like my whole life sort of thing. And now, like, with Bounce to Play Dirty putting on one of the best platforms ever, and I've always saw what he's done, and and I think that he's, he's gone strength to strength. And I, I love the fact that it's, I love the, f I just, I just love to be part of it. And I'm, I feel like to be headlining it um, with, with, with with boxing with two boxing talented fighters. I feel this is the first time that it's kind of like an influential sort of. Uh, vibe of fighting, but it's got actually got quality fighters on there for the first time, and I feel like really and truly this is the, the first wicked and bad professional boxing show. Full storyline lines gonna go. Well, you wow. say that oh, I got the hammer. You know the judge, right? I only hand out life sentences, so we'll see who's got the hammer come night eighteen. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. I know he's, he's shitted it really. He can have oh, now. Let me the tell you something. You're stood there with like God knows how many you people. Nobody would have came one down here. I was coming down here. One man one. up. Don't be stupid. One man don't up. Be stupid. Don't, don't come down here. I'm a one. Don't worry about me. I would have come down here. I'm a one. I would have come down here. I'm a one. I would have come down here. I'm a one. You go nowhere. I would have come down here. I'm a one. You go to hospital on your ones as well. Trust me. You go to hospital on your ones as well. Trust me. I'm a one. Listen, me. Give a Let me tell you that now. Get that shit for that idea. I don't need. I don't need people around me to be full brave. Trust me. Listen. Trust me. I predict knocking him out. I think um, I think time, time, time's a very big, strong unit, and people will be surprised if I can I, I can get him out there. Um, but that's what I'm about. I'm about giving them surprises, delivering. Tell me a little. Uh, you, you've had your fun. Run it, you, you've had all my, you've had this people around my area. There's a small bunch of people around my area that don't like me. It's a bit like you know, um, it's a bit like the Lion King. You've got that dark shadow we play something here over there. There's a few hyenas that you know, yeah, don't like me. They give you a lot of ammunition to run your mouth off on the ground. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, but you'll be in that ring alone with me. 
and uh, you know, made the best man win. Basically, I started boxing in Wheelie Castle down at a pub called The Raven before it moved to a dance hall. I was probably about like 14, because um, I, was, I was misbehaving, obviously, when my dad left, and my mum couldn't really handle me, she phoned the police round. And I bashed my door up from my bare hands. And it was a wooden door, and the police officer came and says, uh, I couldn't do this in my bare hands. He says, you should get into boxing, you should have a fully grown man, I couldn't do this. So I did, and then obviously, I got, I got a bit of skills at about 14. Um, and obviously, when I was about 16, just here, I was riding my bike, and I, I come past a couple, of, a couple here, um, well, little did I know, it was a guy who'd just been released from uh, armed robbery and uh, you know car theft and he was quite a, a very well-known person around here. You know, everyone was afraid of him, but I didn't know him from anybody. So I had to look at the, the couple and I, and I tried to proceed down here. And um, basically he, 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 rode a, he ran up to me when I was on my bike, because my mates were here, I caught my mates on the bike. So he ran up to me on my side and he goes, um, yo geezer, yo geezer, do you know who I am? He goes, yo, you look at my girlfriend, blood. you look at my girlfriend. I looked at him and I was thinking, this guy's, weak. This guy's white for, for a start, he's talking like that. I goes, no, I don't know yet. I goes, I, I goes no, I, I looked at this girl, I goes, oh, she looks nice. But me saying that doesn't mean like, oh, she looks nice, I like her. He went, well, you're trying to take the piss, blood. You're taking the piss. And I'm thinking, no, nah, I'm just saying that she's nice. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to my way. So go, no, you go your way, I go my way. Don't want any trouble, do you know what I mean? He goes, yo, blood, you know who I am? Yo, geezer, yo, geezer. Swings a punch at me. I get off my bike, put my bike down. What the fuck are you doing? He goes, yeah, you think you're bad, you think you're bad. Try to hit me. So that's when I knocked him down. But when I knocked him down, I broke my thumb off his head. Now I'm only 16 years of age. He's about, he's about 23 at the time. Uh, and as I said, he was, you know, he's a known criminal around the area. Um, so as I broke my thumb off his head, I knew I couldn't use that thumb anymore. Um, yeah, so he, he basically, he, he was, uh, he, he looked like he was scouting. No, it wasn't that point actually, was it? No, it wasn't that point. So what happened is after, after he broke my thumb off his head, I kept hitting him with the left as he was getting off. Bang, bang, bang. And I knew I couldn't stop this man because he was just too big and too, you know, too old for me. And I bit him on his shoulder, <laughs> bit into his shoulder. And he's screaming, oh, bro, yo, bro, yo, geezer, let me go, yo, geezer, let me go. And I was going, are you going to fuck off? Are you going to fuck off? If I let go, like, if I let go of my jaw off him, you're going to, you're going to go? He goes, yeah, bro, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, please just let me go. So I let go of like that. But at the time, back in the, when it happened, I thought he just went, went and gave me a hook. But what he did, he was, he was, when I was biting his shoulder right here, he was actually preparing and taking a knife out of his pocket. So <clears throat> he's like, yo, geezer, let me go, let me go. And as, as I let go, he slashed me down. I went under and hit him with the left again. And as he fell on the floor, he tried to scoop from his knife, but I thought he was trying to pick up one of these broken slates here because it, years and years when this happened, they used to have like these slates over here, so, like the gardens where they've got uh, bricks, but they were like slates. And I thought he was crawling for the slate, but actually he was trying to pick his knife up. He was kicking his hand, kicking his hand, kicking his hand, kicking his hand, kicking his head as well. And then he got, he got up and he was all like this. He was going to come back, I'm going to kill you all. I'm going to kill you all. So from, from day one, really, uh, you, you know, death threats and, and people that can't take losing a fair fight, uh, even the fact that he was 20 odd years of age, I'm only 16, uh, he can't take it. So, we, you know, we had an ongoing feud for many years, which basically, you know, let, had multiple fights around him around the area. And because the, uh, I had his blood all over me, from, well, because my blood was all over me, but I thought it was his blood, the police took my clothes off me, because I got, because uh, later on that day, I got, arrest, I got arrested at the moment, not arrested, the police and the ambulance were called out because my face was cut open. And they, um, they took his, they got his DNA off my shoes. So he, to them, I got a reputation of being a grass because his, his DNA was found in my clothes. So I had many, many fights with all different sorts of gangs around here, uh, which I'll tell you, now I'll take you to the point where I've had my very first fight. So basically, um, when I was eight years of age and I finally got away from the house, um, there was a couple of lads here, um, Jason and Darren. Jason's not with us no more, but Darren, uh, he, he is, and basically, I remember him saying, oh, let's get the kids to fight. So he, he, made, he forced me and uh, my, mate, uh, my mate's cousin, Sean, to fight. But Sean was 11. Now, you can imagine, like, it's three years don't sound like a difference. But when you're eight years of age and somebody's 11, it's like it's almost like a life, it's almost like two lifetimes, isn't it? So uh, we had to fight. I had to fight an 11-year-old. Um, and then basically they took us down the bottom of the grass here to fight. So basically, yeah, this is where I had my very, very first fight. Uh, eight years of age against an 11-year-old. Um, and he got me in a headlock, and basically I just remember being, being here, suffocating, couldn't breathe, uh, you know, I was crying. And I didn't cry at the time, I remember when the, the two older says, no, 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 no headlocking, punches only, punches only. So they separated us, and we had to stand and fight, you know what I'm saying? And I remember like, I remember just feeling that being suffocated, and basically that's when I just fucking punched the life out of him. And uh, yeah, but I give him a right belt in. And, um, I remember him crying, I remember him punching, I was punching him, I was just crying, both was crying, but I was just punching the shit out of him. Yeah, and I couldn't be victorious, and that's when I knew MMA weren't for me. 
Yeah, so that, that's basically the very, that's, that was my first experience being let out of the house and getting away from the house for the first time is being forced into a boxing match. And that's probably why I'm so fucking good at it. Born, born for it. Yeah, that's a go, that's about it. That's a nice little clip on it.